So you can have in your records, when do you want to start your own business? Brandon's answer, completely arbitrarily, um, when you're making about 30K a year. That's when I would start your own business. Some will say start it right at the beginning um, when you're earning around 5K. Um, the advantages of starting a business, usually most authors do what's uh, called um, S Corp, or it's S Corp, S Corp, which is really just um, a, a corporation with an S election, which means small, small business. Um, this is versus, I believe, oh boy, this gets really complicated, like just a normal LLC, or maybe it's an LLC with an S election. Anyway, most people do what's called an S Corp. Um, you'll have to talk to somebody. This gets into talking to lawyers and things, which we talk to. This I know a lot less about because I just went to my lawyer and friend and said, do this. Um, the advantages are if you put all your copyrights under the corporation, um, this can give you a lot of liability protection. Meaning if someone, if, if in your book you um, end up, someone thinks you plagiarized them, um, or things like this, then they can sue the corporation, but they can't come after your home assets, I think, in most cases. Talk to your, talk to your accountant, your lawyer. Um, this is important. Um, there was an author, a local author, very, very good author. Um, I'm not going to mention their name, but um, they um, wrote a, a fiction series, historical fiction series, in which they interviewed somebody about their story and used it in the book. Um, their documentation they thought was good about this. Um, the person was fine with it. Then, as what I understand, once the, um, the person passed away, the children challenged and said that the documentation was not appropriate. The court agreed, and the person was sued for in excess of $500,000, which they lost the settlement on. Okay. If the corporation has the copyrights, they can go to the corporation for profits on future books. They can't take your house. Okay? That's a pretty important level of protection, I feel. This is why we, we have done this. You can, also, um, you can also do some interesting things where you pay yourself a salary. And then um, profits you make above the salary, the IRS will actually count as dividends as a shareholder in the company. Because of this, you can save self-employment tax as long as your salary is reasonable. So let's say that you are making 90K, and you and your spouse are officers in the company, and you pay yourself 45K as a writer. I don't know what the number, listen to your tax accountant, your, your, tax, um, your, yeah, your tax professional. Um, the rest of this is not subject to self-employment tax after the 45K. So you get 45K without paying the 7.5% because as owners of the company, the book is an asset of the company which is earning money for the company. And you got paid by the company to write that, a salary, and then a return dividends which are taxed differently. Saves you money. This is why the 30K thing is kind of a, a nice rule of thumb because once you're getting above that, is when you can start paying yourself a reasonable salary and having dividends on top of it. Before that, it really doesn't make any sense. You may want it for this one. Um, and it, it's only like 500 bucks to establish a corporation. There are a few things you need to do. You, have, you need to have bylaws, regular meetings, talk to your, um, your lawyer, but you know, and you, you pay like $500, you file it, you've got a corporation, okay? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that advantages on this. There was an, there's another few small advantages. Well, and you can shop around too with different states have different corporation laws. Mm -hmm. I know, for example, Nevada has really positive corporation laws. Okay. So I, I don't know a lot about that. There. I don't know a lot about that. Oh, the other thing is your, your, all these deductions and exemptions and things we're talking about. When you're taxed as a corporation and the IRS looks at it and says, wow, this corporation that makes $90,000 a year had 10000 in deductions, exemptions whatever. That is small potatoes. We have no interest in auditing them. When this individual makes $90,000 and is, is, is taking a $10,000 um, deduction, we're like, hmm, not a lot of people do that. That's interesting. Or when the company has office space. Yeah, they all do. 
When the person has office space, hmm, that's probably a home office. They, we want to pay attention to them. So there is the, the added benefit of um, legitimacy. OK? OK, yeah. Going up on this point, um, you have to be careful about saying like, which state you want. Like, yes. Around because the IRS looks at that too. Because if you're like, well, I'll, I'll go pay my taxes here, and then if the laws change, you go like, well, I'll go pay, pay taxes here where there's like, no taxes. Like, uh huh. OK, good. I thought that was a little, I, I don't, I've, so I know some authors who do that. Exactly what you just said. They are fully behind it. They actually like to choose Idaho as one of their big ones uh, because of the tax, the way that the judges rule in Idaho. I don't know how that works. I have stayed away from it. You can talk to other authors. If you come up after, I can tell you some of them you could talk, talk to and you can get their accountants. I don't know how that works, but I've just stayed away from it. Well, I think it, it might raise red flags, but it's not illegal. Yes. Legal. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of the things that the IRS looks at is yeah. because people are kind of walking that line. And yeah. if you don't want to be like constantly visited by auditors, you might want to just be. But if that sort of thing you're OK with and you keep good records, you'll be fine. The one I would say be very wary of, some accountants try to classify book income as royalty income. Yes, yeah, she just. Um, be careful about that one, okay? Royalties are meant for royalties paid from like owning a mine that you're renting to somebody and they're mining out stuff and you're getting royalties on the money they get out of it. It isn't usually interpreted for authors who are getting royalties off their books. Royalty income is taxed very favorably toward you, meaning it's, you, you get a lot of, 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 of things. Um, but it's a very, it, it's, it's a line that I'm not sure, well, I've never w wanted to walk that line. You would want to talk to your tax professional, but I'm going to give you a warning against that one. Okay? You agree with that, don't you? Mm -hmm. They scrutinize that very Yeah. Okay. That said, I do know an author who spent 30 years taking it all as royalty income, and um, the courts have ruled in favor of him because of the places where he is doing that. Have you ever been audited? And if so, what is it like? I've never been audited. Um, so. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. But I mean, if you have a good tax professional, they'll do most of it. If they've got all the records, the auditor actually goes to them, deals with them, maybe ask you for some records. And you don't even really have to be meeting with them or anything like that. So that's another good reason to have a nice accountant. So, OK. Uh, let's move on to funner stuff. Not to imply this isn't fun, but you are going to be very glad you have that all in your notes um, once you start publishing. I'm sorry that we have to spend time doing this kind of stuff, but I think it's important for you. All right, one more question on that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you know, the, the author that was sued. Um, mm -hmm. what are, are there things that you can say, like, absolutely never do this if you don't want to be sued? Yeah. Um, anyone you talk to whose story you consider putting in a book, Go get a really, like, I haven't, I don't do historical fiction or things like that. But if there's someone's story you're using, get an ironclad um, document of, what do you call it, um, release, do, an ironclad release form. And I don't know what one of those looks like, but you could talk to people who do it. That's going to be really helpful for you, okay? Um, once you get to a certain level of notoriety, you, you can't avoid not getting sued. I haven't been sued before. J.K. Rowling gets sued all the time. So there's some sort of level between me and her. And she, she's won every lawsuit. But, um, but people, yeah. yeah. What's that? She also sues. Yeah. So um, yeah, there you go. OK? Yeah. What's the, like, is there like a time threshold or anything like, as far as using somebody? I don't know. Because, I mean, obviously, like, Genghis Khan or whatever, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there is, like, Genghis Khan's yeah. matters of record, yes. Um, and this author really only got in trouble because the, uh, the children were publishing their memoir, and they were able to prove in court that this, and this is, I heard this, like, third hand. 
I know something happened, but the details I'm giving you are third hand. So just keep that in mind. But the, what happened supposedly is that the children were releasing this book, and they were able to prove in court that, they, that this guy's book, using the story, infringed on the thing they were producing that made their sales go down because it had already been used. Does that make sense? Like, since they were able to prove in court s damages because of the thing they were doing is why the, it went poorly for this author. My question kind of piggybacks on the question mm -hmm. you had there. Are there certain people that are in the public domain that, that you can freely write about? I don't know. Um, I assume that people of record, you can. I don't know what the law is on that. Jane, do you know? No, no, but usually a good copy editor will. Yeah. Okay, um, one, one thing I do know you want to be very careful on is song lyrics. Don't put song lyrics in your books. Those are copyrighted unless you buy rights to them. And a good copy editor, James Wright, will know about this. Don't put song lyrics. Don't, um, don't, for instance, you're probably going to be OK. Like pe people, historical people, you're, I'm sure you're fine on. Some, anyone who's really, really dead. Really dead. <laughs> but for instance, um, someone tried to do a biography thing of J.R. Tolkien, and the Tolkien estate blocked it recently. You can go look at that. So that is some legal ground that's like, hmm. Yeah, and one other thing, the difference, let's, let's talk very briefly about the difference between copyright and trademark. Coca-Cola is a trademark. It's not a copyright. That means you can use the word Coca-Cola in your books. There's no problem with that. However, if you write a book where Coca-Cola causes people to turn into zombies, that's probably parody. You'd probably be okay on that. But if it's a book where it causes them to just die or where you're saying Coca-Cola has this, did I mention this? I think I mentioned this. Um, that's, you can be sued for, for libel. No, libel, which one's written? Libel, libel. yeah. Slanders, Slanders yeah. Um, you can use cop, um, trademark terms, OK? You can say, I Googled it. You don't have to say, he used a search engine. If you want to, you can say, but you can say, I Googled it. We went to McDonald's for dinner. You don't have to say, we went to McDowell's, um, which, you know, you know. Um, but something like that, you're OK doing. Just don't libel them um, by, by implying untruths about them, OK? Yeah, anything negative could get you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But it means they could sue, they'll, if, if you're saying anything negative, they can sue you. And you, they would lose if you fight them. But you'd rather not have to. But you'd rather not have to. Does that make sense? That's, that, so I, I agree with this one. Um, unless the point of your story is to expose a truth, like something like Fast Food Nation or Super Size Me or something like this, you can use truth as a defense. That's the point of your story. If you're doing that, that's fine. I would, yeah, Does that, that's just common sense. But you're right. Truth is, as long as it's truthful, <laughs> you're okay. Okay? All right.